Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my 2020 deck collection and declutter series. So I'm just, I, I don't know why I have to fuss with my props when I start, but I talk with my hands, so there you go. Anyways, welcome back. Today's category is going to be the natural world and buckle up because I have so many decks in this category. This is probably going to be my longest video in this series. So yeah if you're new to joining me for my 2020 deck collection essentially what i have done is i have sorted my deck collection into categories such as the natural world or um which includes like animal and nature based things or my dark and shadowy decks which i've already filmed and so forth and so on and then within each category i'm sharing with you all the decks i have in that category and I'm sharing any decks that I think I may be able to rehome. Decks that are not resonating with me anymore, decks that I'm ready to pass on, potentially that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's dive into it. <clears throat> so I literally have a huge pile of decks next to me. I'm just going to go through them. There's no rhyme or reason to the order, but here we go. So first up is the Majestic Earth Tarot. This is such a special deck. So this is by J.D. Hildegard Hinkle, the creator of the Tarot of Delphi, which has been on my wish list for ages. But this was the most recent deck by this creator. It did take a while to come to fruition, but once it was out, I actually purchased it. So I did not back it on Kickstarter. I purchased it after it was out. Um, which, by the way, this is a really nice touch. This um, card that has the names of the original artists that are featured in the deck. This is really, really beautiful. The guidebook looks great. To be fair, I haven't worked with this deck yet at the time I'm filming this. It's on my list of decks to work with, but I do have a full walkthrough up on my channel, or at least I have a planned walkthrough going up on my channel. I don't think it's actually up yet, um, but it should be going up soon anyways. I babble. This is a really, really beautiful deck. It's a gorgeous, like, matte cardstock. Um, fairly thin, but feels sturdy, if that makes any sense. Sometimes you can almost feel like there's a core in the card, like the way it moves. You can kind of feel like it's going to bounce back when it bends, that sort of thing. Beautiful, beautiful landscape art deck. And each one of these cards, I think, really beautifully depicts the scene and the meaning of the card. Plus, in case you get stuck, there are some keywords on the card, as well as the elemental and astrological correspondences. So this would be a really fabulous deck for any deep work, any study work that you wanna do. But, oh my gosh, I'm dropping cards. But it is absolutely stunning, and this is definitely staying with my collection, um, particularly since I haven't worked with it yet. But um, this took my breath away during my initial walkthrough, and I'm so grateful that I picked up a copy. I don't know if you can still get it. I think it's out of print already. Um, and I don't know if it's coming back. I don't know the story. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. I will have a link below to probably to the listing that was on Amazon in case it comes back or something. Um, but this is a beautiful independent deck and I am so grateful to have it. So yes, definitely keeping that one. Next up, I actually have two decks by the same creator. Um, so these are decks by MJ Coulinain. So I have her Crow Tarot. This was actually picked up by Mass Market. So this is this was originally an independent deck, and then it was picked up and um, became a mass market deck. And US Games did just a beautiful job with the quality of this deck. I mean, US Games has been just knocking it out of the park for a while now, but I think this is one of the first decks where everybody was like, wow, like US Games, you're doing so well. Um, and giving US Games, I guess what I mean by that is they've been giving us almost an independent deck feel with mass market decks, and it's just been really, really great. So these are really beautiful backings. This is this Crow Tarot, I think is really well done. Um, I don't find myself reaching for this deck a ton. However, I don't have a lot of decks that I would consider very airy decks, and this is definitely one of them. So I don't think this is a deck that I would be interested in rehoming. I love this art style. The cardstock on this deck is really nice. It's thick, um, sturdy. And I just think it's really, really beautiful. The majors have these kind of fancier top and bottom, um, or top borders, I guess you could say, versus the minors have a lot more space around them. Um, beautiful, beautiful deck, and if you are drawn to crows or ravens at all, this is worthwhile. I could see myself possibly rehoming this in the future um, if I found another deck that sort of fit this niche for me. Um, but I think this one is beautiful, really well done, and I don't really want to let it go anytime soon. So, you know what, maybe... I also don't really feel drawn to work with it very much. You know what, maybe I'm going to put it in my... Let me think about it. I'm going to put it here and then possibly we'll revisit at the end of the video. 
but the other deck I have by MJ Coulinane um, is her gorgeous Wise Dog Tarot. Now this one was independent, um, so it did not, it was not picked up for mass market as far as I know. And this one still comes in a nice two-piece box. It definitely has a much um, thinner uh, cardstock, but it feels fine. Like it feels like a decent quality. And this is the same art style, but of course featuring dogs. And I don't have any other dog decks and this one just makes me happy to look at. I have not worked with it for a full week so I can't really give my thoughts on it beyond first impressions. Um, I do have a walkthrough of this deck up on my channel. Definitely one that I'm not ready to part with, at least not until or unless I find another dog deck that I really want. On the other hand, I also don't know if I would reach for this super often for all the same reasons that I don't really reach for the Crow Tarot that often. Um, and the cardstock, I mean, it's kind of hard to compare when I've just handled the crow and it has such a really lovely cardstock. I think part of my issue with dog tarot, this <laughs> is just so cute. Um, I think part of my issue with dogs and tarot in general is it's almost like if you're not my dogs, then you know what I mean? It's kind of interesting. I have a kind of mixed feelings about it to be completely honest. I'm not in love with the backs either because again, not my dogs. <laughs> if it was my dog, is that weird? Is that like totally bizarre of me? I do love all dogs, but I want I want my dogs in this deck, and they're not in my they're not in this deck. I don't know. I might actually think about this one too. That's weird though. I feel like I probably won't end up rehoming either of these, but we'll see. Okay, moving along because I'm already like six minutes in and I haven't really done a whole lot. So let's jump in to a long and much loved deck in my collection. This is one of my favorite independent decks, the Illuminated Earth Oracle. This is just really, really special. In fact, when this was shipped to me, this is an independent deck. When this was shipped, it actually came, see it's falling apart, but I, I keep putting all the bits back in. There was this like little bundle with some cedar and a little feather and some a little flower, dried flower, which has since disintegrated. But I just keep it in the box because it's got that lovely like earthy energy that was obviously intended to accompany the deck. Um, the guidebook is useful and has great little expanded meanings, but I've never felt like I needed to reach for it. That said, oh, I forgot I even had a little card in here. I must keep it stashed, oh no, in the back here so that it doesn't, there we go. That's one of um, Claire Mac's, Claire Mac, right? Yeah, Claire Mac, I was like, did I forget? Um, that's one of her um, business cards. Anyways, uh, this is what the backings of this deck looks like. These are the borders, it's really dark blue. This was a Samantha, uh, Samantha Menzo, Sammy Menzo, made me do this, <laughs> made me buy this, because I was watching her walkthrough of this deck, and I think by the time she got to like the fourth card, I was like, I need it, I need it right now, and it has never disappointed me. It's a lovely, like, silky matte cardstock, um, really expansive meanings, and it is a very earthy deck. Um, it's really grounded, it feels very um, balanced and it's never let me down. It pairs beautifully with a lot of decks, but particularly anything that's even remotely nature-y, I feel like this deck pairs really well with because it's got that sort of grounded, earthy energy, and it is just lovely. I don't know what this art style really is called, but this this art reminds me a little bit of like uh, acrylic fluid pores. I don't know if that's what it is, but it's got that kind of organic-y, fluid-y feeling. And you look at the images sometimes and you're like, this seems so abstract, but then the keyword is so good, it's decay. And I can totally see decay in this image. Or plants, air, source. Uh, Claire Mack is a Seattle-based artist, so she also comes from my neck of the woods. That's where I was born and raised, was south of Seattle. And maybe that's part of it, but this deck just, I think, has a lot of really beautiful energy and I don't have any other Oracle decks that are like this, and I love it. Again, it's one of those that you can pair with a lot of different decks. It just works on so many levels, so this is definitely staying. Okay. Let's talk about this beastie. It's a beastie just because it's in a gigantic bag. and Well, because it's a gigantic deck. This is the Crystal Medicine Oracle. Um, this is by Rochelle Sharman, and it is a Rockpool publishing deck. Um, and this has some really beautiful energy to it. Uh, what I really like about this deck is it's basically crystal and crystals and shamanism kind of meet with this. So just to give you an idea, you have um, a main keyword and a crystal and an archetype, I believe, associated. Yeah, some kind of archetype or 
um, further deeper exploration associated with every card. So the diamond is um, associated with Mother Mary and unconditional love. Red Jasper with sacred ceremony and celebration. Larimar with self-expression and water. Black Tourmaline uh, with cleansing and feather. And so this side here I feel like is where you sort of get the shaman stuff. Maybe not actually. Cathedral, Lightbrary, Crystal Blessing. Um, Galena, Soul Retrieval, and Middle World. I really like the art. I love that this was a round deck. Um, and in theory I really, really like this for the idea of sort of getting more comfortable with crystals. Where this deck really, really shines is actually in the guidebook. The artwork and the cards are, are beautiful. They're really well done. Rockpool never really disappoints. My deck for some reason seems to have this like, kind of like warping happening to the cards, which is strange because I've just been keeping them in the box and I haven't done much. And with round decks, I tend to hand over hand shuffle them. I may have riffled these, but these just seem like they haven't aged well and I haven't worked with yeah I haven't riffled these I don't yeah so I don't know what the story is but they have like a little bit of like weird warping happening I don't know if it's my environment but yeah I've been keeping them in the box so that's really strange I'm only literally just noticing it now I don't know why they would do that um that being said in the guidebook what's really neat is for every card you get um an oracle initiation which is like a message about the card um, information about the sacred site or the, the medicine rather so this section here um, is the medicine so this is sort of the oracle message this is the med medicine and then you have information about the crystal and then you have a suggested ceremony for working with the energy of that card and I love the depth of this deck but to be honest since I got it I have not really felt particularly called to work with it and for my crystals I find that I'm very picky about crystal decks in general and I just haven't felt inclined to work with these cards. A lot of these crystals are just crystals I don't have in my collection. Um, Sheen Obsidian I have, um, Angelite I do not have, Amber I don't have, Shatakite I do have, um, I believe I have anyway, Blue Barite I don't have, etc, etc. There's just a bunch in here that I don't have. I do have a Shiva Lingam. Um, but as much as this deck attracted me when I first picked it up, it's just not one I felt like I wanted to go back to. So I think this is one I'm going to consider to consider for decluttering. But man, look at this giant, like, beautiful Peggy bag. I'd probably keep this because this would make a great little travel pouch for a bigger deck. Yeah, this probably has to stay with me. Okay, well, let me just think about these. I'm going to put them in the pile here to be thought about. Okay. Next up is a beloved deck that's definitely not going anywhere. This is the Roots and Wings Oracle. This is probably, if I had to pick like my top two or three Oracle decks, this would be in that grouping for sure. It would have to be. I have used this deck so much. It pairs so well with so many decks. Um, it's got all of these like nature-based sort of natural world themes through it. But it reads intuitively like a dream. It's also stunning production quality. Like it's gorgeous rose petal finish. They shuffle really well. There's something about this deck that just really helps me connect directly to my intuition. My dog is totally having a spaz behind me. Shayla, what are you doing, baby? Hi. She was literally like burrowing in my blankets. Okay, anyways. Beautiful, beautiful deck. I feel like it's got a lot of that sort of like connecting right to um, earth. All, the, all of the energies of the natural world. I think Roots and Wings is a really appropriate name for it. Um, I actually would like to maybe someday add the mini deck of this to my collection. Uh, I didn't initially because the mini didn't have all of the cards originally, but now it does. So that is definitely something that's sitting on my wish list is the mini version of the Roots and Wings so that I have one to keep in my purse because this is, again, probably my favorite just just all-purpose oracle that I could pair with anything I can use it. This is one that definitely goes to the shops with me when I go to read in person, which I don't do very often. I did a bit over the winter time, um, but definitely comes out regularly for client readings. I just love it. I love it. Um, so this is not going anywhere, for sure. Next up, in this gorgeous metallic accent butterfly bag, is my Jody Bergsma Spirit of the Animal Oracle. This deck is so pretty. Um, it's a favorite for all of the depth and the beautiful, beautiful artwork that it contains. It's funny because when I first got this deck, it had a bow in it, um, and then it's somehow it's adjusted to my climate or whatever, and the bow is gone. 
These cards are just absolutely stunning, and I don't think I could bring myself to rehome them. It's one of my favorite. There's, I've only got a couple Animal Oracle decks because I can find them. Well, I guess I have a few more than I that I used to have, but um, I find that this one just is. It's just so breathtaking to look at. It's got my favorites in it, so it has a ladybug, and it also has a unicorn, and that's sort of my criteria for any animal oracle deck. It must have both a unicorn and a ladybug. That's sort of my thing. Um, this has both, but the artwork is literally, it's so stunning. Um, and the it's got a, a title, so it tells you what the animal is, which is great. You might not know at first glance, right? Um, and then it's got a, a main theme or keyword, and then there's messages. So you can work with this deck at whatever level makes sense to you. You can just work with the artwork, you can work with the animal medicine, you can work with the keyword, or you can actually read these messages. So for example, deer is love, and it says, be gentle with yourself. You heal with the power of love. See the light in all things. Acknowledge your self-worth and grace. I just really love it. I don't use it a ton, I'll be honest, but I, I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful, and it's giant. Um, I have to shuffle it this way, or I have to side riffle it, um, which I do very gently and I don't bridge because I feel like these are cards that I would mess up if I was too aggressive with them. Um, but again, the guidebook is really beautiful. It's really well produced and it's the same size as the cards, which means I can keep it with the cards in the bag. If the book is like larger than the cards, then I can't keep them together because the book will sort of warp around the cards and I don't need that. So keeping. That's the punchline. Okay, let's talk about a deck that I've had a contentious relationship with because this deck has left my collection and is now back in my collection. Um, this is the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Krantz. <laughs> this is the mass market edition. Um, I got this deck during the time when it was being really, really hyped and worked with it, absolutely loved it. It was the most pippish style deck I'd ever worked with, but I took the time to get to know it. I definitely bonded with it. And then I guess I got bored with it or whatever and I passed it along and I missed it. So when my friend Erica was looking for a new home for hers, I was like, me please. And she very graciously sent it to me. So I have it back now. And there's something about the way that this deck changed the conversation in and around what tarot art, what we expected, I guess, from tarot decks. There's something special about that. And I think for that reason alone, I think it's just one of those decks that I just missed. I missed having it. And this is why I try to be careful with my um, deck rehoming decisions because I want to be sure that I'm not going to miss a deck once I've made the decision to pass it along. That is why when I do things like this where I'm filming like a declutter series and I'm thinking about decks I may pass on, I always set them aside for a little while and then ultimately add them to a trade list after I've had time to sit with the idea. But this is, is staying. I'm not making that same mistake twice. So staying. Next up, this is such an adorable deck and I love it. Um, this is the Tarot of Trees. I don't have the artist's name in front of me and I can't remember it by heart. Um, I would like to eventually get the big guidebook for this deck, I think, but this is so cute. So it's definitely smaller than tarot size. I'm just looking to see if I have, this isn't a great size reference, but it'll work. So this is a Dreams of Gaia tarot, which is a little larger than a standard tarot, but you can see it's definitely, um, I would say like a playing card size deck, uh, on, on the smaller side, right? So fits nicely in the hands. It's a great size, I think. This is literally like if a, a Rider Waite Smith clone, but with trees. And I love it so much. I think that it actually expresses the meanings of the cards really, really well, given that this is trees. Um, and it just, it's, it's lovely. It just, there's nothing like it. And I really enjoy and appreciate it. So this is definitely staying in my collection. It is my, probably my earthiest tarot deck. Um, if I was to pick a tarot deck to represent a singular element, this would be my earth deck. Um, just as the crow tarot would be my air deck. Um, so cute. Okay, love it. Love it staying. And I edged this in black. It didn't come that way. Um, 
it's like a glossy cardstock, really cute. Independent deck. And again, I will try to, I don't know if I mentioned this already in this video, but I will do my best to have links down below for everything unless it is out of print and I don't have a good link for you. Even then, I try to give some kind of link so you can at least see it um, and what it looks like in case you ever come across it. So this is my favorite animal deck, and I've talked about it a bunch on the channel, but this is the Animal Kin Oracle by Sarah Wilder. This is the Hay House Mass Market Edition, and this is the version of the deck that Hay House released in 20, I think it was 2018? 2018. The current version of the last version I've seen anybody post pictures of has a different backing, but I love these backings. Um, so I'm glad I have this one. It's a gorgeous, like, matte, silky cardstock, really, really nice production quality. Hay House doing some really good things with a lot of their decks lately as well. Um, I just absolutely love this deck. Again, it has a ladybug and a unicorn in here. I love the mix of animals. It's got 65 cards, so it's pretty, it's pretty expansive. And it's absolutely a joy to work with. The keywords are great. There's like, you have, again, you have the beautiful artwork, horse motivation. So you know right away what energy you're working with. Camel is celebration. Phoenix renewal. Bluebird is pleasure. Cardinal is passion. Shark is instinct, etc. And they all make sense. And this is something else I think with animal oracle decks sometimes is if the keywords and the messages just don't make sense, then you might not end up jiving with it. But this one, they definitely do. And I love this deck. I've used it a bunch. I will continue to use it a bunch. It is certainly a favorite. And it's the main reason why I try my best not to bring in a whole lot of other animal oracle decks because this is the one that tends to get the most love. On that note, if I'm being honest, that Jody Bergsma deck may be redundant in my collection. So let me bring that out. I'm going to put this in the pile to potentially think about rehoming. I'm just going to put it in the pile to think about. No decisions, but I'm definitely keeping my animal kin. <clears throat> okay. Next up, I have the stunning and new to my collection, El Goliath Tarot, the second edition. Oh my gosh, you guys, this deck is so incredible. Um, I went to film my, my unboxing and my first impressions, and I ended up making a video that was over an hour long because I got so drawn in to the depth of the artwork and how well thought out. This is a full tarot deck, plus it does have extra oracle cards that are mixed in. Um, which I love. I think that when I, I haven't actually worked with this deck for a full week at the time I'm filming this video, but when I do, I don't think I'm going to try to work with an Oracle deck next to it. I'll probably forget that I said that, but this is the only card I struggle with because spiders are hard for me, but I'm okay with being challenged in the Eight of Pentacles. I'll survive. Um, here's one of the Oracle cards, Sage, the Purity. Um, this is such a beautiful deck, and Goliath did such an incredible job with the production quality on the second edition. I didn't have the first edition, I don't know, I just know that there was a lot of changes made, and those changes were a result of the feedback he got from his customers, and I think that's actually really ad admirable. Oh gosh darn that spider. Um, I think he is such a beautiful card. This is a beautiful, beautiful deck, and I'm so excited to have it. Um, and I don't have a lot of like animal-based tarot decks, but this one is gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to say that and then I'm going to be proved a liar in a minute. So anyways, this is definitely staying and I don't know that this is the box it's going to, or the bag it's going to stay in. I'm still deciding what the perfect bag is for this deck, but so far this is the one. Next up is another animal tarot and it takes us in a completely different direction, which the bag probably gives you a hint about. This is the sweet, um, tarot fauna. This almost ended up on my trade list. In fact, I think it was on my trade list for a very short time, and then I worked with it again and <clears throat> really bonded with it the second time around. Um, partly because um, of Cosmic Creeper, who had done an incredible walkthrough of this deck. And Cosmic Creeper is one of those people who I really look to for um, her thoughts on animal decks because I really trust her connection with animals and if a deck like this resonates with her I'm more likely to take it seriously. I know that sounds weird, but do you ever have people you follow on social media like that? Um, in any case, one of the things that I think is really special about this deck is that you have families of animals that take you through the different suits. So you have these cute sea otters, excuse me, river otters through the shells, which is the cup suit. Um, and then you have bears in the rocks, which is the pentacle suit, these foxes in the torches, which is the wand suit, owls in the feathers suit, which is, which is swords, and then, of course, you have a variety through the majors. Um, 
Did I get everybody? Yeah, foxes, bears, sea otters, and owls. Yes. Um, this is an animal deck that has it does it does deliver the difficult messages, but there's a sweetness and a purity to it, a little bit of a brightness, a little bit of a gentleness. Um, again, it doesn't shy away from the difficult stuff, and it has a lot of emotion in it but it just isn't as heavy hitting as a deck like the El Goliath or the Brady Tarot. So it just depends on what it is you're looking for from your deck. You know, looking at decks like this though, make me realize that decks like the Crow Tarot and the Wise Dog Tarot are more for me a novelty because I think I really enjoy having a variety of animals in my animal decks, even if it's somewhat limited, like here where we have different families of animals that take us through um, the miners. Really beautiful cardstock on this, by the way. It's a linen finish, so it shuffles like a dream. Beauty, beauty, beauty. And I did actually um, buy this off of somebody that I met at Northwest Tarot Symposium in 2019. Uh, this was out of print for a while. I think it's actually currently back in print. Again, I will do my best to have links down below for all the decks. Tarot Fauna. Beautiful. What do we have next? Okay, this one's gonna be tough for me, I think. So this is a beautiful deck. This is a deck for wonder walking. And this is so beautiful. I don't think I could bring myself to part with this, but I just haven't really figured out how it fits into my practice yet. Um, so it says, Magic Awaits. This was actually a deck that was designed, I just love these wraparound style boxes, particularly when they open up like this. Um, an, in, an invitation to the human experience, it says, and then it sucks me right in with a labyrinth, which is a really important symbol in my personal life. Um, the guidebook, such as it is, is more of like a one of these fold-out pamphlets, but it's really a thick quality paper with a rose petal finish. It's really quite lovely. And there are actually keywords, and there are suits in this deck. Um, but this was initially designed to be a deck of cards. Look, it says Walk and Wonder. This was originally designed to be a deck of cards that would inspire you to do your own wonder walking. So walking through nature and paying attention to certain things. I love the labyrinth backs. Um, this is a landscape deck and the main thing that I struggle with, um, because the, the artwork is absolutely dreamy, is that the titles or the keywords of the cards are really hard for my eyes to find and focus on. But if I slow down, it's actually not that hard. So we have story immersion and then we get an octopus it's like an undersea scene thumbelina home connect the moon pretend the sun journey it's so beautiful the woods um and the more that i look at it the more i'm like there's i really need to to work with this deck more um i love this what does it even say? Edges. This is what I struggle with. It's so small. Um, yeah, this is another one. Oh, first love. But if I slow down, if I slow down, they're, just, they're so beautiful. Um, I love this watercolor artwork. It's really gorgeous. I, I think I need to hold on to this for now and see how I want to work with it going forward. Oh no. Pamphlets that you can't. It's like a map. You can't figure out how to fold it up again. Okay, I figured it out. We're good. We're good. I sorted it out. I'm going to keep the ribbon outside and tuck this in. It's a good bag match though. Um, so this one, a deck for wonder walking, I'm going to keep it for now. Okay, so what do I have next? Here's another much loved deck that has gotten a ton of use, particularly for client readings. Look at this little panda bag. Isn't it the cutest? It's just the one that felt right for this deck. Um, but this is the Affirmators. Um, excuse me, I said Affirmators. This is the Anna Mantras deck by Katie Welsh, and I adore this deck. Um, I always use it in a particular way. I have, it's one of the first like full walkthroughs I think I did on my channel. So if I remember, I will link up the full walkthrough down below or up in the cards or something. Um, but it's organized by Chakra. So you have Crown, Third Eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral, and root chakra. And each one has like a little animal and a single keyword. And it's like, uh, it's actually an affirmation. So it'll say be tenacious, be curious, be assertive. This is all root chakra stuff. Um, for this, the sacral chakra, um, be eternal, be patient, be bouncy, be reliable, etc. 
and it goes through all the chakras like this and I actually have a reading that I offer and I've done a bunch of them and it's a self-care chakra reading and this is one of the decks that I use so I actually sort these into their individual chakra colors which is why I edged them in matching colors but I sort these into their individual piles and I shuffle each pile and I draw a card for each chakra for my client and then I also do a three card oracle reading as well and it ends up being a pretty meaty reading. I've never had um, these readings not feel like they have lots and lots of depth and yet this isn't the kind of deck I think you'd normally look at and think depth but there's so much here and maybe part of the reason that there's so much here is because I've done so much work with the chakras and I'm really comfortable speaking that language so to, so to speak. Um, the guidebook has a lot of great information and I did edge my pages um, in a coordinating color so I could easily go to whatever chakra I'm looking at if I felt like I wanted to use the guidebook. The messages in here are great, the guidebook's super well done, and there's an intro to every chakra that gives you a little more information about that chakra um, before you get into that section's animals and so forth, but this is a really sweet deck and while it's an animal deck, I consider it first and foremost a chakra deck, but it it still got put in this category because I didn't know where else to put it because it is it is a little animal guy. Um, it actually comes with its own little zipper pouch that holds everything just fine. It's just that I like to hang my bags on the wall so I had to put it in a different pouch but super cute. Love it keeping. What else do I have here? Oh boy. The Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle by Ciolo Thompson. Ciolo is the creator, this is a Llewellyn publication, Ciolo is the creator of the Line Strider Tarot and the, I think it's called the Shapeshifter or it's, it is a shapeshiftery kind of animal deck. Um, and it's a very recognizable art style, Ciolo's art style. The cards have a lot of white space and this is a botanical oracle deck. Um, and there's a lot of white space and then there's a botanical sketch and some of the sketch has color and some doesn't so it's kind of like a black and white line drawing with pops of color and each card has a primary keyword and then it names the plant and it has its Latin name I believe it is and I want to love this deck but visually this deck just does not excite me and I've held on to it for a long time because Ciolo is also based I believe in the, in the Pacific Northwest which is again where I'm from and so the plants represented here the the herbs are actually herbs that tend to be tend to exist in my local geography right there's the dogwood plantain garlic um, sage and this is what always draws me back is if I want to do herbal work red clover strawberry these are all plants that I could theoretically find I should be able to find with within relatively um, close proximity to where I live uh, and yet I've had this deck for a while and I've never worked with it that way and the lack of color in the cards just doesn't inspire me with a lot of um, excitement to work with the deck and this is a beautiful art style it just tends to not be my art style the guidebook is really well done with a ton of information. So for each herb, you get some other names for that herb, you get a bunch of information about it, and somewhere here, yes, in every herb there's also a bit of a tarot reference. So for example, Lady's Mantle is, um, looks like it's associated with Queen of Cups and High Priestess, and it talks about how that, that herb's like properties or uses line up with the meaning of the Queen of Cups or High Priestess, which I thought would help me learn the herbs better but I'm so uninspired to work with the deck that it just ends up sitting and not getting any love. Um, my copy of this does have, on the guidebook, does have what looks like the tiniest bit of like warping here as if maybe the corner got like moisture on it or something. Um, but otherwise it's in like perfect condition. I think I am going to put this in the to be considered for rehoming pile. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up putting this in my to trade, to trade pile. Okay, next up. Another botanical deck that I am not prepared to let go of, partly because, oh, I love this bag by the way, my dogs are barking, ooh they got in trouble with Peggy. This, these are the, um, the illustrated herbiary cards. Um, I totally wrecked mine because I tried to laminate them and then had to peel the lamination off because it just didn't work. Um, but they're really flimsy. I did edge my deck in a matching like sort of navy blue color. But these are super, these are basically paper that you literally punch them out of a sheet. But I love this artwork so much. You can buy a version of this deck that's a um, 
a deluxe version that has these basically came in the back of a book and the book is the real treasure honestly um and I don't want to get rid of the book, so I'm not going to get rid of the cards because there's there's no point. But you can get a deluxe version where the cards are bigger and I think they're they're much nicer. They're a card stock. You don't have to punch them out of anything. Um, but because I don't have any plans to rehome the book, I'm just going to go ahead and keep holding on to the cards. I like this little pouch they're in, though. But these don't hang up on my wall because I don't tend to reach for them really for anything. They're more of a reference than, than, than anything else for me. So these are just going to go back and live on my herbal shelf, but not rehoming them either. Next up is another animal tarot that I've already mentioned, but I haven't shown yet, and that is the Brady Tarot. This is the second edition. Um, I do have my first edition, which I'm rehoming or in the process of looking for a home for. Um, it came in a wooden box, and it had smaller cards and the cards had white borders on them and I recently got the second edition which I backed on Kickstarter and I just prefer this one. The cards are just ever so slightly larger and they have a very fine black border instead of a white border. The artwork is bigger and I just really like the way that I can sink into these cards more. So this is the one I'm definitely, definitely keeping. It has a beautiful rose petal finish. It's a gorgeous deck. And I think actually not having it in a box is going to have me reaching for it a lot more, which actually makes me feel like maybe I should take the other deck I have in a special box, which is my last unicorn tarot, and hang that deck up in a bag so that I'm quicker to reach for it. Because I find that when my decks, I love this like pre presentation of this second edition, Brady is gorgeous. Um, when I have my decks hanging in bags, I'm quicker to reach for them. I totally didn't even talk about these cards. <laughs> I'm like, la la la, I'm going to keep it. Probably because I just recently filmed a video about these. In any case, what I love about this deck, let me just back up a little. The, the guidebook is written by Rachel Pollock, and it's incredible. It's packed full of information. Emmy Brady is the artist of this deck. What I love is, I call this my National Geographic deck, which you've probably heard if you've watched my channel a while. But it's nature without fluff. It's not in any way light washed. It's not... Um, only focused on the positive. If anything, I would say this deck leans a little bit dark um, and a little bit shadowy because it's not afraid to shy away from that difficult stuff. And the imagery reflects that. And I really love and respect that about this deck. And it's one of the reasons why if I had to keep just one animal tarot, this would probably be the one simply because it's so well done. So I really, really love it. Again, production quality out of this world. My copy is signed. Um, and that's a definite keeper. Okay, we're almost, we're sort of whittling away that animal decks here, guys, or the natural world decks. So next up is a really, really great independent oracle. This is the Connected and Free Alchemist Oracle. Um, these cards are incredible. I'm going to talk about them in a second. But first, I have a mild beef about the guidebook. Um, the guidebook is great, but I never use it because there's literally no rhyme or reason to how the cards are in here. Um, there's no contents, there's no easy way to find the cards, and the creator of the deck basically says that's so that you will rely on your intuition and not use the guidebook as much, which just makes me cranky. I would rather have had a guidebook I could use easily if I want to instead of having to hunt for the, for the entries in the guidebook. It just felt, I don't know, mildly like a cop-out, like give me a contents or an index or something, but instead the little guidebook, which I'm sure has good information, it just tends to get ignored. The cards themselves are really great. So this is the creator of the Lumina Tarot, I believe, which I was never drawn to own, but this Oracle deck I actually really like. Um, it's got a really cool art style. It's incredibly uh, versatile. The keywords are really expansive. This is a deck that, again, I can pair with almost any tarot deck. In fact, if I had to pick my two most reached for sort of expansive Oracle decks with lots and lots of cards, my most sort of tarot-like Oracle decks, it would be this one and the Roots and Wings Oracle. So this is right up there with my favorites. It doesn't hurt that there is chakras in this card as well, um, which tends to be something that I gravitate towards because, again, if I see Root Chakra in a reading, if I pull this out, I have so much I can intuitively say because I'm so familiar and comfortable with the chakras. So any deck that incorporates the chakras just gives me more to work with and I love that. I just also love the artwork in general. I think it's really, really beautiful. And like, look at this family card. 
it, this is perfect. This is right up there among my very favorite Oracle decks of all time. I wish the cardstock were just ever so slightly thinner or more flexible because this is a very stiff deck. Um, but this is another one that I regularly will bring to client readings if I'm reading in person or will have out on my table if I'm reading for a client because it's just, it's it's really, really useful and it, it just delivers. It just delivers great readings. It gives me lots to jump off from and I really like it. Although I really should just put the book away because I never, well, anyway, I never use the book. And it's a shame because I actually like working with my guidebooks, as you guys know, because I have a whole tarot and oracle by the book series on my channel. So yeah, love, love, love. Keeping. Next up is a beautiful animal tarot deck. This is such a great deck. There's so much depth to it and it's so well thought out. This is the Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian C. Wild and this is, oh which edition is this? I'm gonna feel like a jerk because um, Jillian gifted me this deck. She was the first creator actually that ever contacted me and said she wanted me to share my deck on her, cha her deck on my channel and I turned into like an idiot. Like she's like, hey, we, we actually ran into each other at a, at a a book signing event at Ethany's. And she's like, oh, I wanted to, to see if you wanted to share my deck on your channel. And I literally had to run away. I was like so giddy. It was just the sweetest thing. And this, anyway, Jillian is a sweetheart. And um, her kind heart comes through in everything that she does. But her artwork is actually so well thought out. There is so much symbology present in each of these cards. And even though they have sort of a minimalist almost style to them, they read incredibly well. And I do think that's because she did put so much thought into the way the cards were depicted, how they were represented. And this edition, it's either the third or the fourth. Why can't I remember? I'm going to check. Um, I had the previous edition, I remember, and I ended up rehoming it. Um, this one is third edition. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. There are some changes between editions, and if you look on my channel, or I'll try to remember to link it up in the cards, you will see a comparison between the third edition and this, which I is my one I have here, and the second edition, which I did eventually find a new loving home for. Um, but I love the changes to the third to the deck in the third edition. Again, really, really beautiful. I have a lot to say about these. They work really well. It's a very balanced deck, and I think that if you're a fan of decks that sort of break down the meanings of the cards into straightforward, easy to understand symbology, I think you would really, really like this, particularly if you enjoy working with animal energy at all. But I just find this is so great, and I find it's really accessible to work with, and clients respond really well to it. Yeah, I just really, really like it a lot. And the guidebook is very well done. And in fact, the back of the guidebook has bits on what you see in the artwork in case that's something that's important to you. But through the main body of the artwork, what you actually get is a message and a little bit of uh, animal medicine. So for example, there's a giraffe in the Seven of Cups. And so there's a giraffe familiar whisper, which says, let your imagination run wild and step into action. And then there's also a reversed meaning or disconnect. It's just a very well thought out guidebook and I was really pleased with how this edition turned out and I'm so grateful to have it in my collection. I love it. It tends to live on my favorites rack where I can get to it quickly because it's just a really great reader. So keeping for sure. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm not going to go over an hour. I'm not going to go over an hour. Okay. Next. <laughs> um, the Herb Crafters Tarot. This is a deck I really want to study because I don't find it easy to work with this deck intuitively and yet I absolutely love it and it is my favorite herbal deck I've ever seen, touched, play with, held, or owned. Um, and it's actually the main reason why I think I'm probably going to end up rehoming my um, Hedgewitch Botanical Oracle because here in a tarot I have 78 different herbs that I could potentially work with. Um, maybe not all of them are local and that's okay. But there's a lot here. There's a really, really smart system for how these cards are set up. I would really encourage you actually to go watch Sunset Bow Tarot's walkthrough of this deck because she did an incredible job um, taking you through the entire deck, explaining the system, and it was actually a really, really, really well done video and I highly recommend it. So go check out Sunset Bow Tarot's channel and check out her walkthrough of the Herb Crafters Tarot. You won't be disappointed. Um, and there's so much wisdom there. There's Yarrow. Um, yeah. 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I really want to spend some time studying and working with this deck, and I've got a few decks on that to be studied list. This is one of them. Um, but in the meantime, it lives in my area where I keep my herbs and, or my herbal books rather, and it's a resource and I do use it more like a reference for now, but I would like to eventually use it more for reading. So that is the Herb Crafters Tarot, definitely keeping that. Here's another interesting and fun one. So this is a crystal deck that is very underrated in my opinion. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it. Um, it has a little slide out drawer like this and it's just called Crystals, Crystals of the Stone deck, 78 crystals to energize your life. And it's not lost on me that there are 78 and probably you could go through and find tarot references. I'm way too lazy. Um, but this is a really well done deck. What I loved about this deck was that there were clear bright natural photos of each crystal and I find this to be really really useful. I do not use this yet as an oracle deck but I regularly use it for reference. What I love about it is that you have these great photos on the front of the crystals and then on the back you have a whole bunch of great information about the crystal in very easy to understand terms. So for example this tiger's eye, tiger's eye, what is it? who needs it, where to put it, and when to use it. And if you wanted to use this deck like an oracle deck, there's a message at the bottom. Balance your whole being. Um, Moldavite, transform your life on earth. Ametrine, make your big dreams your big life. Scolocyte, dive into your dreams. Danborite, turn on your electric light. Tibetan black quartz, light up your spiritual path. So you can work with this deck like an oracle deck. Um, but as a reference deck, and it does shuffle really nicely, um, as a reference deck, I love this. Um, I love working with crystal energies this way, and if I really want to bring in the energy of a particular crystal for something, I feel like I can actually put this card out on my table, and it's not the same thing as having the physical crystal, but it's enough for me to focus my energy sometimes, and I think that's because of the way that the crystals are depicted. I've looked at other crystal decks, and none have really felt as useful to me as this one is, and there is also a little guidebook that talks a little bit about how to work with crystals, how to make a crystal grid, um, how to set an intention. It's really simple. Not a lot of information here because of course all the information is on the cards themselves. But I really enjoy this. And also the color of the backings of the cards does coordinate with the color of the crystal, right? So if you're like, oh, I'm looking for a blue crystal, you can kind of like page through here and find a card back that's around the right color and see if that's the one you're looking for. Um, but anyways, I really like this. I need to not talk as much. I'm really taking up a long time. But yeah, this one I'm keeping for sure, and I do keep it kind of on display and easy to access because I use it more as reference. Next up is another deck that is new to my collection. I haven't worked with it yet. It's on my list to work with. Maybe by the time this video is up, I will have already worked with it, but at the time I'm filming, I have not yet. This is the Oracle of Essences, the second edition. This is a stunning independent deck and it is based on essential oils. Um, what I love about this deck is A, the information it contains, so again, more like a reference. The backings are absolutely stunning and so is the cardstock. There's like a really gorgeous matte gold, um, really nice silky matte finish. Um, but what I really love about this deck is how fantastic the artwork is. It's nice and borderless and then there's great keywords. So for Arbor Vitae, it's completion and wholeness. For basil, it's relief and rejuvenation, bergamot, determination and maturity, etc. And the art, artwork reflects those meanings really beautifully. Um, so I feel like this is just a really wonderful balanced oracle in general because it covers so much ground. Um, and while I don't see myself ever having a huge library of essential oils in my apothecary or my, my witchy cabinet or whatever you want to say, um, I love the idea of this sort of plant-based or oils, essential oil-based oracle to sort of pull in those energies. And in a way, it allows me to maybe get to know them a little better and see which ones I might really want to bring into my collection to work with by learning more about them. And the guidebook is really well done as well. You get an affirmation, wise words, a divinatory meaning, um, and as well, you do learn a little bit more about that oil. And it all ties together really well, which is something I really appreciate. I don't necessarily want a deck that just has random stuff on it. I want that stuff to make sense with the meaning, right? I want the connection to be there. Oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up, guys. I'm almost at an hour on this one. Okay. 
Next up is the Gorgeous Botanical Inspirations deck. This is a U.S. Games deck that's based on the language of flowers. And essentially the language of flowers is really like what did gifts of different flowers mean? What did they stand for? What were they, what did they represent? And it's actually really, really stunning. I keep saying actually like I'm surprised. I'm not surprised when I say actually. It's just like I really overuse the word, I'm noticing. Um, I love this deck. It's really well done. I wish there were no words on the back of the card. That's kind of a beef of mine. But I love the parchment looking backing. I love that you get the name of the plant, its Latin name, keywords, and a quote on every card, which gives you just a lot to work with. But another thing that I think is a hidden treasure in this deck is the guidebook because in addition to the quote that you get right on the card and it's also repeated in the guidebook, you also get an inspirational message and these as well as your divinatory meaning or your information rather about the flowers here. Your inspirational message here, they're often really beautiful and really actually very, I just said actually again, they're really inspiring. Um, so this is a beautiful deck to work with and because of the way it's, it's, it looks, it pairs really beautifully with any of my decks that have more of a vintage or antique -y kind of feel, and it doesn't distract from them or pull you into like the modern world, so I love that about it as well. Definitely keeping. Okay. Just a couple more. Okay. I've got three more things to show you. First, the Whispering Woods deck. This is one of these little cute mini decks, and the backs of the cards have all the same image on them. It's just this like little sweet forest scene. And then on the fronts, they're just all these sweet little messages. And I've had this out actually on my reading table for a long time, or on my altar space. And I'll typically just every once in a while, I'll walk by it, I'll shuffle it a little, a little bit, and then I will pull a card. But to be honest, I don't really reach for it very much. Even though it's readily available and accessible, I just don't tend to want to pull a card from it. Um, partly I think it's just a lack of visual interest because the card fronts are all the same just with words and the card backs are all the same. Um, some of these little mini decks have different backings on the cards and I think those are really, really cool. But this one, it's all the same. It's really a sweet, it's like this magnetic box too, which is super satisfying. But I think I could consider rehoming this one. So I'm going to put it to the side. This is not cards at all, but rather the Animal Speak Runes by Ted Andrews. I don't work with these enough, but I love them. They're not going anywhere. On each rune, you get a animal name and a keyword. Although, and I, I just love it and they make sense. So this is super fun to work with. I haven't played with it in a long time. I love the little bag that it's in um, that Peggy, of course, made me. But I love this deck, or excuse me, these runes. <laughs> They're not going anywhere, so I'm keeping those for sure. And finally, one of my newest additions and a favorite is the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck by Melissa Salvaggio. I have raved about this deck, and I, sh I freaking love it. For starters, yes, there is a unicorn and a ladybug in it, even though it's not just animals and there's chakras. So basically this just covers a ton of ground. I love the keywords. It's a rose petal finish. It's a trump sized deck. Um, I think it's a trump sized deck. Yeah, it feels like a trump sized deck. Um, matte gold gilding, just beautiful. I backed it on Kickstarter. Love the artwork. This is a treasure. This really is a treasure and I adore it. So it's not going anywhere for sure. And I should have, I believe, a full walkthrough of this. Yes, I do have a full walkthrough of this on my channel. Which again, if I remember, I will put those walkthrough links in the cards above or in the description box below. So, I've got just a couple more minutes left before my camera cuts me off. Let's review the things I set aside for possibly decluttering. First, Whispering Woods. This is a yes. I can definitely rehome this. Next up, Hedgewidge Botanical Oracle. Yes, I've been thinking about rehoming this one for a while, so it is going to go in my pile of decks to be rehomed. Next, Jody Bergsma's Animal Oracle. I don't think I'm ready to let this one go. Nope. I'm not ready to let this one go. I think I would miss it. It's really beautiful. And I think with some of my other Oracle decks out of my collection so that this one can get a little more play, I think it will see more use, so I'm keeping it. 
Next, the Crystal Medicine Oracle by Rochelle Sharman. This one I'm going to rehome. I think it's time. I don't think this one and I really get along that well. I had a great experience with it, but I've felt not at all like I've missed it, and I haven't been wanting to reach for it or wanting to look for an excuse to rotate it in or anything like that. So this one can definitely go. So that's going to go in my to be rehomed pile as well. And that leaves me with my two um, MJ Coolinane decks, my Wise Dog Tarot, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera, and my Crow Tarot. I really don't know what to do here. I think if I'm being honest, I don't think I'm ready to let either one of these go. I haven't worked with the wise dog for a full week, so I don't really know how it is to work with, and I don't want to judge it, so I'm gonna keep it. And the crow tarot, I mean, is this gonna sound, this is this is going to sound so shallow, but look at how beautiful the backings of these cards are. I don't think I'm ready to let either one of these go. I think I'm still feeling a little too much pull, so I am going to keep them both. So that means that in this episode, I am only decluttering these whoop, these three decks, but it's something and I have whittled it down a little bit. Considering how many decks were in this particular category, I feel like I possibly could have done a little bit better, but I really, I really enjoy my natural world, my nature-based decks, my animal decks, my plant decks, my stone decks. I, I love so many of them. So I think... I think I'm not going to be too hard on myself <laughs> or try to pressure myself. So these are going to go into the pile to be rehomed. Um, in case you haven't caught it in my other videos, I should mention that at the time I'm filming this, I plan to set these aside for a while and see if I miss them or if I feel like reaching for them before I rehome them so that I'm not too hasty. I like to sit with these decisions for a little bit so that I don't have any regrets. So it's possible by the time you see this, I've already had enough time, but it's not guaranteed. So if you do reach out to me about any of these, just know that I might not be ready yet. Um, when I am ready, I will probably do a video that goes through all the decks I have that are going to be looking for a new home and shares the details on them and I may also start listing them in the Supportive Tarot Facebook group on our Tarot Trade Tuesday posts. So look for that as a possible way to connect with anything that I might be rehoming. But until then, I'm just going to sit with this for a bit. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for my Natural World decks. I think I only have one more category um, to go through, plus maybe a miscellaneous for any that somehow got forgotten or didn't get get discussed yet. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Keep an eye out for my next installment of my 2020 deck collection and declutter series. And until next time, have a wonderful day wherever you might be. Remember to like this video, share it if you know somebody that might enjoy it, subscribe if you're new here, and do all those good things. If you would like to book a tarot reading with me, you can do that over at Supportive. Oh wait, yep, dang it. One more deck. And I'm going to be really quick. So if you manage to stick it out through my outro, then you're going to see this bad boy. I meant to include this in this section, and I totally forgot. Um, this is the Earthbound Oracle. <laughs> definitely a natural world deck, and I'm definitely keeping it. I totally forgot I'd set it aside to mention during this category, because I'd had it in the wrong category before and forgot. So um, definitely keeping. Love this deck really sweet. Okay, now I'm actually done. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Uh, I think I said if you'd like to book a reading with me, you can do that at supportoftarot.com. But in any case, I'm going to definitely sign off now. Have a great night or day wherever you might be, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!